hello hello and welcome to another live stream on the haunted hippie channel welcome my darling little cult babies how are you i hope you've been well um i gotta like dry off my mascara i was just like right before the show started i was like oh, oh, oh my god but now i'm like I feel, it feels sticky on my eyes. Anyways, hi. How's everybody doing? There's a lot to talk about. This was kind of um kind of an emergency cult meeting because uh, it was decided upon very last minute that I'd be going live. So apologies for that if you did not have a lot of notice. But thank you guys for showing up nonetheless. Um, let's see who's here. Got to put on my glasses because I can't read, babes. Um, just watched the trailer for The Crow. Okay, yeah, so we're already seeing the split in the audience of people that are like, it's so bad, um, can't deal with it, uh, and then other people think that it's not that bad. I actually haven't really heard that much about it. I have not watched the trailer. I still have not seen the original Crow. I started it recently the other night, and then it just wasn't the, the vibe. It just was not what I was looking for that night, so I had to turn it off because I just was like, mm. Um, so I still haven't seen it. I haven't seen the original and I don't think I'm going to watch the trailer. It's really, really interesting to see all the discourse though. That has, that's kept me entertained. Um, I haven't seen it yet. How bad could it be? I feel like uh, we'll unpack that in a minute. We'll unpack that in a minute. Hey, Gory Tiger. Hello. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll get into the, the crow discourse in a little bit. Um, hello, uh, Garrett. Hi. Hello. Um, hello. This is gonna be a doozy. Um, yeah, <laughs> Pro probably. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. The first topic of the day, though, is something that I'm not super happy to talk about. You could probably guess what that is. Um, oh, found me a few days ago. Well, welcome. So good to have you. Uh, also, I'm wearing my Nightmare on Elm Street shirt for, for I think the first time. Vibes. Oh, hey, Ryan. Yeah, happy St. Patty's Day weekend, everybody. Be safe or else. Call an Uber or a Lyft or a cab or get a ride with a sober friend, okay? Or else. <laughs> or else. Hey. Hi. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Yeah, Maxine releases on July 5th. I think I... No, I don't think I put that on the thumbnail because I was like, that's not really... That's not, that's not really a whole topic of conversation. That's just we finally got the release date. Oh, but you know what? We could we could update on um, the, the lawsuit because uh, Mia Goth and Ty West finally responded. So I could track that down. We could actually talk about that. Uh, you're wearing this. You have this shirt? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, nice. Have a good jog. You're better than me. I've never been a runner. Not I. Nope. Um, you're in it too. Nice. Hey. Let's run up stinks. Wow. I can't believe stinkies. Little stinks. I can't believe that one's stuck for some of you. That's amazing. Um, can we lurking? No problem. Hello. Uh, well, I don't care if you don't like the name for my plushie bat. I truly don't care. His name is Romero, and I think it's fucking adorable. The crow oh, you don't like the original crow. There might be some slander thrown your way. I know that people are very like they're very beholden to that that original movie. Um, and I can't tell if it's because of the quality of the movie. It seems from like the stills that I've seen and stuff, it seems like this gothic masterpiece. Um, but when I first tried to start watching it, it just wasn't what I wanted to watch in the moment. And so I'm like, is it just because of the, the tragedy? Is it because of the tragic story? Like, is that part of it? Why it's such a cult classic? Hey, thought it looked pretty epic. I'm see, it goes so it's so back and forth. This course is crazy. Thank you. Hi, hello. Um, I am gonna watch Late Night with the Devil, but I don't know if it's gonna be opening in my theater. That bummer. If it doesn't, I'll be really sad. Um, but oh, I'm so happy. I thought that Love Lies Bleeding wasn't going to be opening in my theater because it had such a limited release at first, but it's in my theater now, baby. I'm probably going to see it tomorrow. Um, and I already have my ticket for Immaculate for next week. Uh, oh yeah. Tarot's coming out too. Thank you. Oh, Father Hippie. Hey, dad. <laughs> going to sub that all love. Nice. Uh, oh, Monkey Man. I'm excited for Monkey Man too. I think that one's coming near me. 
You love it. The vibes are an acquired taste. I dig it. Love the soundtrack too. Not feeling the new version with Skarsgård. Doesn't have long hair. Is that like a crucial part of the character or do you think they're just trying to like switch it up, you know? Um, oh, hey, Rockman. Glad you made it. Hello. Hi. Um, Tarot. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected, but I'm probably still going to see it. It's just, you know, it's part of my job. I would not go out of my way to watch all these Blumhouse releases if this wasn't my job. But here we are, living life. Hello. Yo. What up, dog? <laughs> my day's been really good so far. It's been really good so far. I hit up an estate sale. Um, and I found some cool stuff. I should save it for my next physical media haul. But yeah, I found some cool stuff lately. Uh, oh, thank you. Right. Not bless you. Hex you. Right, right, right. Um, it's been good. I got some coffee. I had a... <laughs> I, I ate a giant cheeseburger from my <laughs> Because it was so weird. You guys, it was so weird. Last night, Scott thought that we should go and try this brand new Italian place that's like kind of near our neighborhood. And we love Italian food. We were really excited. And we we're like, oh, you know, it's this is brand new place. It seems to have good reviews on Yelp. We get there. There's like nobody there. And the food was, it was so bad. It was so bad. The bread, like, it was so dry. I swear to God, it was like a two or three day old baguette. It was just, it was absurd. So we didn't really eat that much last night. So this morning I was like, yeah, I'm going to eat a burger. Um, oh, you got a food poisoning yesterday? Jeez. Oh, that sucks. Hey. Uh, oh, hey, well, Meister, thank you. So you have a leprechaun ranking. I did finally watch the movies. I did watch all of them. Some of those would have been good for a watch along. I agree, but I was having to like binge them kind of. I was watching multiple per day and I didn't know what my schedule was going to be like. I was just kind of fitting them in between everything because I just have a lot going on right now. Um, so yeah, but next year for watch-alongs for sure. For sure. Thank you. Okay, fellow cult members. Nice. <laughs> nice. And Bill, I trust. I'm looking forward to The Crow. Okay, I guess we should talk about The Crow first. But oh, The Film Drunk, my fave. I have got to pop off on Scream 7. Probably, that's what I was planning on my first topic being. So I don't know if I should just jump into that one. Um, but uh, thank you. I'm only attempted to watch one Crow movie, the one with Kirsten Dunst. I was too bored to finish it. I don't get bored too easily. This is true because you recommended some out there movies for us. Uh, I did see some of the TV show. I didn't think that was bad. I didn't know that there was ever a show. That's wild. Um, the Corners of Many Nutritious Breakfast. Yeah. Oh, it's a Pulp Fiction line. Oh, well, I haven't seen that yet. Otherwise, maybe would have quoted it myself. But yeah, um, let's just let's let's just fucking get this out of the way, okay? Let's talk about Scream. Um, uh, I originally did not want to talk about this because I just have decided that I don't want to give Spyglass any type of promotion, and I can't talk about why on YouTube because. YouTube flags any such content. If you want to know what I'm referring to and what my stance is, follow me on Twitter especially, but then also Instagram. I have a very firm stance on this and I can't I can't talk about it on YouTube. And I know I've talked about that before, but it still fucking frustrates me a lot because I can't jeopardize my income. And so anyways, um, we're going to talk about this once because I want to fucking talk about it again. Okay. So um, here we go. Okay, so Nev Campbell is going to be back for the new Scream movie. Kevin Williamson is going to direct. Um, I, I can't imagine that anybody, like, isn't aware, but, um, Kevin Williamson is the writer of the original, at least the original three movies. I think writers kind of bounced around for the fourth movie, and then fifth and sixth movies, he was an executive producer, but I believe that uh, who was, it was Guy Busick and somebody else. There's these other two dudes that wrote, um, five and six. So this is really interesting, especially because I'm pretty sure that Kevin Williamson is not even going to be writing it. Um, there's just a lot to unpack here. Cody Leach already kind of covered everything in terms of like what Neb Campbell posted. She's excited to come back, whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, so, okay, so it's only going to be penned by Guy Busick. Okay, so he's not going to be with his partner this time. Okay. 
Um, I thought, yeah, here's a little, little quote from her. It's always been such a blast and an honor to get to play Sydney in the Scream movies. My appreciation for these films and for what they've meant to me has never waned. Very happy and proud to say I've been asked in the most respectful way to bring Sydney back to the screen and I couldn't be more thrilled. I don't, oh, oh, story by James Vanderbilt. Okay, but Guy Busick is the only one actually writing. Um... Yeah, uh, Owen Williamson posted about it and everyone have predicted what it would become or that I'd be directing the seventh installment of the franchise. I don't think any of us really saw that. Um, I don't think any of us saw that coming. I, there's not that much here. I just, there's just a lot to unpack about this situation. Um, I, I'm just disappointed, I guess. And like, even if it wasn't such a loaded issue with Melissa Barrera, like being very unceremoniously fired, even apart from that, I don't think that I would be that excited about this news. Ordinarily, maybe I would have been like, yeah, Kevin Williamson, I want to see what he can do in terms of directing. Like normally I'd be a little bit more nervous about that because I don't, what has he even done? Has he, would this be his fucking debut? Hold on. Let me see. I'm gonna look at his IMDb and see if he's actually directed anything. Uh, he's directed two movies. What? Uh, Teaching Mrs. Tingle in 1999. What in the hell is that? Doesn't look like it did that well. That's the only thing he's ever directed before. And then now Scream 7. I ordinarily would be like, eh, I don't know about that. But um, he, executive producer, I don't know, that comes kind of close to it. I just, like, I'm just really disappointed. I, Melissa Barrera was very vocal, especially when Nev, like, didn't return for the sixth one about Nev, like, not being paid what she's worth. And we were all like, hell yeah, you know? And she stuck by her side. And for this, like, the magnitude, the reason behind Melissa's firing is so much more serious. It's such a more important and firm stance than, like, I'm not being paid enough. That's still important. I don't want to, like, minimize that. But, like, this shit's just so disappointing. I just, like, I don't know. I think, honestly, like, it was the paycheck. Um, and it's for that very reason, too, that I don't, I don't agree. Cody Leach said that he's like, I, I never judge people for how you know, they decide to feed their family or whatever. He's like, I respect that she probably got cut a really fat check. I think I disagree with that. Um, just because like when somebody's strapped for cash, if they're hurting, they're not very picky and choosy with their projects. She would have returned to Scream 6, in my opinion, if she was like hurting for cash or something. But she waited till they cut her a much fatter check. And something it stinks it's smelly boots stinky stinky boots something doesn't smell right to me i don't like it um i'm curious what you guys think just please try to keep the comments clean um it's it sucks it's just it's tough if you guys have been around for any length of time you probably know that scream is my favorite horror franchise of all time and so the fact that like i can no longer support it is just i don't know everything about it's pissing me off Everything's pissing me off. Um, so yeah, I'm curious what you guys think. Um, I, oh wait, oh, I lost my spot. Whoops. Um, yeah, I, th if, if, okay, so here, okay, you bring up a good point. If Spyglass retracted, th like, their actions, and they put out, like, a public statement about it, um, then I'd be like, okay. If they sold the rights, I'd be like, okay. At a, at a recent convention, Melissa said, like, once the rights are sold, I'm back. Like, Sam's story was not done. And I agree. I agree. Um, so, yeah, that's how I could get on board again. Um, I see people saying things like, Nev didn't like sharing the spotlight. She didn't like that there was, you know, new leads in her franchise, whatever. I really don't, I don't think that that's what that is. Um, I think maybe she might maybe be a little bit of a sellout maybe uh, this is all my speculation obviously hey desi intense time to join <laughs> yeah um i know i wish talking about it wasn't frustrating i'm not excited for scream seven yeah you, you will leave Stu comes back um i don't know if i could get excited about that either honestly 
Um, thank you. So one more Leprechaun Horror movie. Uh, oh, Leprechaun's Revenge. Oh, that was just announced. And I was like, the timing of that, of course, I just posted my ranking of the franchise. And then literally that day, I'm pretty sure it was yesterday that they just, they just announced um, another Leprechaun movie is coming. I was like, yeah, of course. Anyway, yeah, the money they're probably saving on the Melissa and Jenna is probably, uh, yeah, enough to get Nev back. That's something I also considered as well. Bringing Sydney back after we had a whole arc about, arc about passing the torch to a new generation. Reeks of desperation. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're desperate. They were fine without, they were fine without Nev. In part six too, like, I don't even think Gail needed as big of a role as she got in part six. I really don't. Um, and it's also, uh, if there also wasn't all the background bullshit, it's like, what are you going to do? W what stakes are there going to be? You're going to bring Sydney back? I thought we gave her her happy ending. Like, Wes Craven never wanted to kill off Sydney. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, I'm sure, yeah, Kevin Williamson, I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, perfect scenario with Scream is that by film eight, they apologize to Melissa, allow her to come back. Yeah, because she's open to it and they tie it all in together. Then just put the franchise to bed a bit. I know, I can't believe, I'm like... <sighs> Give it a rest. Give it a rest. Like, Spyglass, did you not have enough success with Thanksgiving? Can you not just, like, focus on that? Like, take a back seat, maybe, with Scream? They're, fuck they're fucked in the head. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I agree. I agree with this. Um, I... There is language in the chat that I can't pull up. Um, just know that I agree with you. You know who you are. Uh, yeah, still not watching until it's a $5 bin movie, but that's just me. Or, you know, um, I'm definitely not recommending that you pirate it. Uh. Um, thank you. Maybe it's because I'm not hung up on it. I really understand the politics. I'm glad for the returns. Um, I would look into it before saying something like that, to be real honest with you. Uh, to be real honest with you. That's, uh, I would 100% educate yourself first. Um, what are the chances they use uh, Melissa's post to fire her because they want a Nev back? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but like, maybe, maybe, maybe because after they did that, it's like the swell of support to Melissa Barrera was insane. She got like half a million followers on Instagram in a, in a matter of like a week or something. I think she got like 200,000 new followers in like a single day. It was something stupid. Um, they, they don't realize like that they're, that they're, that their franchise, like Gen Z kind of owns it now. Um, it's not the millennials carrying anymore and it's not the Gen Xers. Um, it's Gen Z and yeah, they, <laughs> It's so crazy. Like, just like the undervaluing of the women of color that everybody fucking loves in the new movies. <laughs> Don't piss me the fuck off, you know? Um, if the movie has to happen, this is the next best, best thing. I don't think... I don't need another Sydney story! I don't need it. I don't. Uh... Anyways. Oh, hey. Uh, no worries. A little bit intense. Intense times. <laughs> For the stream. But we'll move on soon. I think it ended in four anyways. I agree. I agree. Like, I. I found Scream 5 really, really clever at the time. I don't think I would change that about Scream 5. Um, but I was glad that she wasn't in Scream 6. There's literally, what's the line of dialogue that gets, she's like, let, let's let Sydney have her happy ending. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Scream's a franchise I grew up with. It's my generation's Halloween. Yeah, I hate that it's muddy now. It's like, it, it, behind the scenes, it kind of always has been muddy, especially because, like, from the beginning, like, they've been produced by the Weinsteins, you know? It's like, what a cursed franchise. Um, yeah, I believe it'll be a messy movie. I agree. Like, they were not, whatever they say for PR or whatever, they were not planning on getting rid of Melissa and Jenna. Like, I'm sorry, especially not Jenna. 
Sorry. Um... Uh, you think it's because Jenna wanted more money, so she left? You believe me? Really? I don't think so, because the timing that Jenna left was... It was suspicious. It was suspicious. Uh, anyway, um, it's been done to death. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, like, they, like, bring her family into it, and now her... Her, her, no, because in Scream 5, her kid was like a baby, so it's not like her kids are gonna be in the mix. I don't, ugh, I don't even want, hmm. um, I don't think, does everybody have this shirt? Everybody's been piping up that they have this shirt. Anyway, um, I feel like the new one's gonna be a throwback vibe. Was, what, was Scream 5 not basically a remake? Like, whatever. Um, yeah, they could have stopped with Halloween 2018, didn't need the two movies after, agree. Um, boo, 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 have a little integrity, come on now. Like, <clears throat> people, I, listen, if anybody here wants to be like, well, I can just separate the art from the artist, no. That fundamentally, that's not something you can actually do. If you use your dollars to support a company, a person, whatever, and you feel like in your mind you're separating them from the art they create, no. You speak with your dollars. You are directly supporting them. There's there's no separation there. That, 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 that doesn't hold any water. It fundamentally doesn't make sense. It's an excuse. And I'm I won't I won't hear of it. Okay. It's bullshit. All right. Um, anyway, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Understatement. Yeah. Um, honestly, that might be a better move. I feel like we need to just put the scream shit to bed because I can't. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I can't, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Oh, anyways. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> I'm gonna move on because I can't I can't with this anymore. Um what do we want to move on to? I have I have a few other things. I didn't have time to even like prep for this stream, to be honest. Oh, what am I drinking? It's coffee. I went up for coffee this morning. Yeah. Um I am gonna let's see, what do we want to talk about? We have Got that bullshit out of the way. We can talk about Clive Barker. We can talk about The Crow. A lot of people were talking about The Crow. And I have thoughts and opinions, even though I don't really know anything about it. Um, but I'll just, I'll react to this article with you guys. And then we'll see what's up. Um, okay. Okay, so internet was riled up by those first images. <laughs> it's, yeah, bad hair day. Um, okay, I didn't realize this article would even be talking about the the internet getting riled up. Oh, it's coming out on June 7th. Okay. That's sooner than I thought. Um, new take on the classic tale. Isn't holding back the bloody violence. Oh, okay. Bill Skarsgård was a huge fan of the original. Well, that's a good sign. Um, was honored to take on the role of Eric Draven. Really drew me to it was Rupert Sanders, uh, was what he wanted to do with it. Wanted to completely reimagine the story and the character and tailor it towards a modern audience. It's a character I know many revere and have a strong connection to. He's unlike any I've ever taken on before. And working with FKA Twigs, yeah, that's cool. Um, I just, like, I wish that I knew more about the character himself so that I could, like, speak on, um, so that I could speak on, like, people's anger about him taking on the role because everyone is, like, um, what's his name? Uh, some, Brandon Lee. They're, like, Brandon Lee is the only one. He's the only one to play Eric Draven. And I just don't know if I could firmly say so because... Where I'm coming from, Bill Skarsgård is one of the most immensely talented actors of the of the modern age, like of his generation. We've seen him as Pennywise, a complete transformation. Um, he's gonna be he he's in Nosferatu. He's gonna be Count Orlock. So I'm the very fact that like the one Robert Eggers would cast him in in like the ultimate role of Count Orlock obviously there's something there. Like I, to be honest, what the, the, the initial reactions that I saw was like, people were making jokes that 
men were like, oh, boo, but then women were like fawning over him. So I'm like, okay, so is it just like, is this, a, is the immediate knee jerk reaction just because it's something that women might like? Because that happens. That's a very real phenomenon. Um, or are people just really, really attached to the original character? Is it like a, is it a Freddy Krueger type situation? Um, where Jackie Earl Haley was just, ne you know, was never going to be as beloved, right? Is that the situation? Um, curious about your thoughts. Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, because I feel like, I do, although I do, one thing I saw, that I think Cody Leach was talking about this, was that, like, it seems like really try-hard edgelord casting or something, and people were comparing it to Jared Leto as the Joker, so if it's anything like that, then I can see where you're coming from. Um, but like, I don't, I guess I'm not making the connection that Bill Skarsgård is a try hard casting move. To me, that's brilliant. I'm like, you got this little weirdo chameleon to star in the movie. That's great. But I like, if it's about the look or whatever, and he's supposed to have long hair, like, I don't know. So let's see. Um, Let's see. Uh, m wait, where where was I? Oh shit! Dune Part Two has reached over four hundred million. Sorry, not relevant, but that's. I guess that's not that surprising. But anyway, uh, the crow. I actually don't even know what it's about. I actually don't really know what it's about. I've read the synopsis, but it's like it's different when you look it up on Google versus like what's on my Blu-ray player, and so I don't. It's a little fuzzy to me. And then when I started watching it, I was just not following along very well. It was kind of, it was a lot to like take in. And so I don't really know, to be real honest with you. Looks like a clown and not in a good way. I mean, uh, oh, he does a little bit. He, d he, yeah. He looks a little bit more like a, like a human version of Pennywise. Um, the trailer looked really bad. Well. I don't know. Why do you care about a race swap? Why do you care? Don't be weird. Um, he, I see, I don't understand this. He like, he's, that's what I'm saying. He's such an engaging, talented actor. I don't. Oh, thank you. I found it interesting that Sting, a wrestling version of, of the, of the what retires the same weekend. This new image comes out for the new movie. Look up Crow Sting. But why would I, wouldn't I be comparing him to Brandon Lee? Why would I compare him to the Sting version? Um, okay. Retires the same weekend, I guess. This, I'll show you guys, because I didn't know about this. Yeah, he looks pretty similar. He does look pretty similar. Anyway. Um, okay, I need to get caught up on this. It's originally a comic book character... Who's an undead rock star that's more of an anti-hero. I don't know much about his uh, villains or anything he went true with the new movie. Um, I do think I, I like the OG look more than the new one. Um, let me pull up here. Brandon Lee versus Bill Skarsgård. Maybe somebody's like posted a picture comparing the two. Oh yeah, sure enough. Sure enough. Okay, let me let me share this. Um you know, it's like, uh, I do like this look a lot better, to be honest. To be real honest with you, I like his look a lot better. The makeup's not that different. They made it, like, this looks a little more clean. They were trying to go for a little bit more grungy. He has a very, like, British look here. The haircut, the terrible haircut, very British of him. Um, and the tattoos, yeah, I definitely much prefer this look, not knowing anything about the characters, but it's like, why we, we did, like, we, we didn't need this, did we? I prefer, you know what I think it is? It's because I prefer the mystique of how he's covered up. I love a shirtless man as much as the next guy, but like, this has more mystique and the clothes are just cooler. Um, this is very, like, I really do understand when people are saying that it's kind of, like, try-hard edgelord vibes with this. I do understand that. 
Because this is like, he's hot and mysterious and cool, and he's all covered up and the clothes are cool. And this is like, abs. Threaded. You know? Like, <laughs> so I guess I do get those complaints. Um, but again, it's coming from someone that doesn't really know anything about these movies. So, mm. Oh, yeah. Um, over on Sledgehammer Horror, they reacted to the trailer. So if you guys like watching trailers, I personally don't. But um, yeah, go check out their video. Uh, let's see. Um, is in, oh. Alex Proyas, the original director for The Crows, making fun of the remake. He's kind of unhinged. I feel like that makes sense, given the little I do know um, about the original. That it's very, like gothic and you know the style kind of over the top i like the og curl look more the long hair how can you be a rock star without long hair you get true well the beatles had bowl cuts <laughs> or does that not matter anymore i'm just saying because i have long hair myself that's rock to me i agree although one of my favorite like psychedelic rock bands um they have short hair i've never really thought about that but like i associate metal and like hard rock with long hair for sure for sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scarlet. He's also in Barbarian. John Wick Four. Yeah. His characters are all completely different. Total Chameleon. He's got this. He's got that. I think it, like he might just be a victim to poor aesthetic choices, and then maybe we'll eat our words. You know, maybe it'll be fine. Because also sometimes trailers can be misleading, so I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You think that he'll be uh, criticized for two films that will flop? Uh, you think Boy Kills World will flop? I mean, I feel like a lot of people are really, really excited for that, but maybe it just has a super niche audience. I don't know. But I mean, people in the horror sphere, at the very least, I mean, we love Jessica Roth from Happy Death Day movies, and we love Bill Skarsgård, and, you know, it just, it looks like a good time. Um, hey. Uh, yeah, I want to touch a movie based on a trailer. It might be awesome. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. The fact Robert mentioned he wants 19-year-olds to see themselves in Bill's Crow. That is off-putting and strange, because then why didn't you cast a teenager? So he's really trying to, like, appeal to... Is he really trying to appeal to edgelords? And, like... That's always, like, off-putting to me. It's one thing to want to make an iconic movie for a new teen generation because I feel like there is increasingly less cinema for them, which is why I was really pleased with Lisa Frankenstein. Um, you know, but it's another thing to like try to be edgy and try to be cool for teenagers. That's really weird to me. Um, that's really strange to me, actually. You thought it was a new Joker at first? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, Jared Little Joker, listen, when I, oh my god, is this all making sense? Are all the puzzle pieces just falling into place? When I was 16 years old, when Suicide Squad came out, um, I was obsessed with Jared Leto as Joker. I thought that he was so hot. <laughs> um, and then re-watching it as an adult, I was like, Bruh. so... If that's really what they're going for, that's kind of a bummer. Because it's not going to be, it's not going to be PG-13, right? So, anyway. Uh, um, oh, okay, not a fan of the original lighting. You think the lighting of the movie was not good? The only screenshots I've seen, I feel like it's looked so gorgeous. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, I think it's more about the story and the actor... And the story and the actor merged, yeah, after the tragedy that happened in Brandon, yeah. People are emotionally connected to it. Yeah. Um, when I saw the initial production stills, I thought he looked silly, but the trailer gave me an entirely different take on it. See, people are really split. Is the trailer good or is it bad? Now I'm really, ah, uh, I'm like burning to watch it now. What I love about the crow and the OG is that he doesn't take himself too seriously the whole time. Heavy moments, uh, but then he cracks a joke every once in a while. Black comedy, which is my cup of tea right there. Um, it was never a great movie, a tragedy, yeah, but in the story behind the comic. Oh, based on the author's girlfriend's death. Whoa. Whoa. There's a, there's a lot more to the backstory than I realized. 
That's pretty wild. I do. Look, hands up. I do. I love a shirtless guy. Um, but <laughs> not all the time. Not all the time. Um, I know short hair is more popular and that bums me out because I love long hair. I hate when Scott gets his hair cut because he likes to keep it short and I'm like, grow it out. Mm. Anyway. Um, young Bill, he's in a Hellraiser movie? I did not know that. Huh. Yeah, no, I, I love tattoos. I also love a tattooed man. But, um, it's something about, it's something about the look of it. You just, you just know, it's just, it doesn't feel that natural in these stills that I'm seeing here. Um, anyway. Yeah, had Brandon Lee not passed on set, no one would care as much. It's true. Well, like, just, it's just such an insane legacy to leave, you know? The issue is remaking a legendary film that doesn't need remade. It's like remaking The Godfather. It should just be a new story. Well, I think, I mean, in the um, this article that I was just reading, what drew me to it was Rupert Sanders, what he wanted to do with it. He wanted to completely reimagine the story and the character and tailor it toward a modern audience. So it, it, he's unlike any I've ever taken on before. Blah, blah, blah. I felt a responsibility to Eric's story and endeavored to stay true to the spirit of the source material. So it sounds like the story and the character are going to be pretty different, but... The spirit will be there. So maybe that's a good thing. Um, that it's not going to be some type of like shot for shot, you know, international to an to American remake or something like that. It should hopefully, you know, have its differences. Bull cuts were considered long at the time. Really? Um, wow. I didn't think so. I feel like because you just see a lot of long hair in like the 60s and 70s. Ugh. Oh, sorry, I'm stretching out my back. Oh. Um. <sighs> Didn't get Edgelord from the trailer at all. No teen vibe from the trailer. Don't know where people are getting that from. Well, I'm getting it from the look of Bill and the fact that his chiseled, chiseled abs are on display. <laughs> um. No, the damage tattoo on Joker's voice. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, that was beautiful. Beautiful stuff. I love that movie, to be honest, because it's so bad. Um, you're fine with the trailer, but the music puts me off. Would have chosen uh, better, like a 60s, 70s music compared to Death and Love. I don't know the music from the trailer. Teenagers scare me, too. Um, they're super weird, and also because, like, I just remember being a teenager and not... I don't know, and just feeling like I was in a fucking zoo when I was in high school. And just feeling like I was surrounded by wild wild animals um that hadn't learned empathy yet <laughs> so i did i was 16 i was 16 um i th i know uh, you like the yeah i do i i like the joaquin phoenix joker um makes you the best horror cult leader on this platform yeah i mean joaquin's joker is just freaking heartbreaking man um but yeah no i don't think he's hot anymore i was 16 i was 16 okay uh, um, think, wait, let's see, uh, oh, the author's wife was killed by a drunk driver, Jesus, that fucking sucks, um, hey, she hated any time I cut my hair too short, yeah, I mean, I just prefer to have something to, something to grab, <laughs> um, Oh, having to pop in and out. No worries. Kind of excited about the new Crow. Not overly attached to the original. I know. How dare. Uh, not crazy about the Joker MG Kelly vibes, though. Yeah, that's exactly what we've been talking about. Uh, oh, hi. Hey. Greetings from Argentina. Nice. Yeah, I um totally forgot. I don't even know if I knew that. Uh, I've never seen any of them. Sometimes I forget they exist. Yeah. Um, Eric being a rock star was movie exclusive. Oh, he was a mechanic in the book. Oh, that's a lot different. Does the remake being new is okay with me? Um, Brandon Lee on set, if I remember correctly, uh, the prop master did not practice proper, uh, gun safety. And I think that the gun, it was loaded with blanks, 
But if you are firing that at close range, I think that they were in a rehearsal or something. I don't know if they were actually rolling yet. Um, and so he got shot and he, he passed away. I think he passed away in the hospital, but I can't remember. I, it's been a long time since I heard that story. Um, so yeah, just super, super tragic. Not unlike the, the more recent Alec Baldwin situation. Yeah. Uh, oh, Rupert Sanders, his last two takes on previous franchises have failed pretty badly. Let me look him up because I actually, I'm not familiar. Rupert Sanders. Um, let's see. Snow White and the Huntsman, Ghost in the Shell, and not that much else. Uh, I never heard good things about Ghost in the Shell, and Snow White and the Huntsman is probably not a movie that I would watch. Um. So, okay. Uh, um, interesting choice. What's the name of Jordan Peele's new movie? Uh, nope. I'm looking forward to a new quiet place. I had a mullet in the late 80s. That's true. My dad had a mullet. <laughs> My dad had long hair. Uh, yeah, in the 70s too. Very swooshy, you know? Um. Oh, by a lodged dummy bullet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love yellow jackets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was in the 60s and had longer hair before the summer. I got a crew cut because I sweat a lot. That's fair. It's like how people shave their huskies in the summer. <laughs> you enjoyed... That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um. Wait. Bruce Lee... I don't know if I knew that. Damn. Well, yeah. I feel like when you're a teenager, you, you, you distrust everybody, especially your fellow teenagers. Just a weird time. Scary time. Um, see what I, what I tell you. I'm still a teenager. I distrust teenagers. Um, it's shocking me it happened again with Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just such a massive oversight and it's like, how does that even happen? Um, yeah, I, I hope he gets charged. Uh, like properly because he his whole defense is that like what did he what did he uh, what did he say he blamed that there like wasn't proper oversight with the prop master or something um or th no who did he uh, who did he blame because it all came down to him he he was an executive producer um i think i'm pretty sure he was like the executive producer on the film so in reality it came down to him and he's just like throwing blame around um so, anyway. You had a crush on the evil queen from Snow White? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, she's kind of fine once she's, like, not looking like the old hag anymore. I get it. Um, <clears throat> I'm salty. Oh no, I can't hate it until I see it. Yeah. Were you the OG first cultist at some point? Yeah, I can, I can include that in, like, my I Finally Watched series, for sure. I just don't know if it's really gonna be up my alley, and if I don't like it, I don't wanna, like, I don't want to bum you guys out with a negative review. Um, they were actually rolling when he got shot. They used that take in the movie? I feel like I don't want to see that. That... That... That's... Is it not weird to anybody else? They use that take? That's kind of fucking horrifying. Um. Okay. <laughs> Mullet Matt, I need to see that. Um, on a lighter note, eventually, yeah, Dad, maybe we should um we should pull up some pictures or uh or what was the what was the spirit day? There was one day where my dad dressed up with some of his buddies in cheerleader uniforms. It was adorable. It's a great picture. Um, you thought his Joker was really stylish? <laughs> like his clothes or his look? Um, I think that I will very much love Society of the Snow. I'm bummed that I haven't seen it yet, uh, but I will. You mark my words. Uh, shaved heads where it's at if you're going bald. That's fair. That's a very, that's very fair. But Scott, my boyfriend, he's got the, this, these luscious locks. His hair is so thick 
and like curly. And I'm so jealous because my hair is not, not as thick as it used to be. And I'm like, you, like most men end up losing their hair at some point. So I'm like, while you got it, while you're young, like you got to grow it out, man. Anyway. Um, Snow White and the Huntsman is a great fantasy movie. Not a fan of this director. The situation with he and Kristen Stewart was not a good one. Ooh, T, what happened? What happened? Oh, it's not in the movie. Okay. Then, Ryan, what did you mean? What did you mean? Uh, anyway. Um, I say we move on. We've only covered two topics so far. I have a few more things that I wanted to get to. Um, if you guys are cool with it, I would like to react to the new pictures from, I think, Chucky season three. Um, cause yeah, that's, it's going to start airing again, I think next month. So I'm super pumped about that. Uh, let's, let's react together, babes. Let me pull that up. All right. So, um, yeah, Chucky's going to be on his deathbed. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Um, I'm sorry if you don't watch the show, but in that case, then you shouldn't care either way. Um, so on April 10th, oh, less than a month. God, finally, finally. Okay, um, part one is blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, yeah, that's all. Not really relevant. Oh my god, and oh, I hope they come back together too. You know, because they've been apart for a minute, and now it's like, now that he's actually, like, kind of dying here. You know, what's gonna happen between these two? Um, aw. Although, I'm kinda, I'm kinda done with, um kind of done with this trio because like I don't want them to die um and I don't know what else is in their story so anyways there's that okay that wasn't that juicy let me um let's stay on bloody disgusting and I also oh yeah Godzilla minus one ah first Godzilla movie to win an academy award uh, my dad and I talked about that over on patreon so join us over there we broke down the entire academy awards um, and then, yeah, this interested me. The fact that Clive Barker is not going to be making convention appearances anymore to focus on writing. And so I just wanted to see, like, what kind of projects he's going to have coming out. Because I think he's just focusing on novels, but, oh, how cool would it be? Well, some of them will probably get adapted. So anyways, um, good news and bad news. Yeah, he's not going to appear at horror conventions anymore. Um, so this, I guess, is his last one in Chicago at Days of the Dead. So yeah, for the last almost 40 years, been visiting conventions in Europe, America, yeah, yeah, yeah. However, it's time to focus entirely on writing. I'm not stopping public events because I've lost my delight in meeting you all over the years. I'm passionate as ever about sharing my imagination with readers and moviegoers around the world. In the very room where I'm writing these words, I have the manuscripts for a very large number of projects, 31 of them. Some very close to completion, others still telling themselves. There are some wild projects in this collection of works, whether close to finished or done. There are also stories that you all knew I'd be finishing. Um, Aberat four and five? I, I haven't heard of that. Uh, so is the third and final book of the art, sequel to The Thief of Always. Um, there are also return visits to characters and mythologies that you may have thought I would never return to. Hellraiser? Huh? Candyman? I hope I'm still able to surprise you in the decades ahead. Or wait, no, did he write... He was Candyman a book or did he just direct that? I don't know. Um, yeah, you'll see his books being published as well as some movie and television adaptations. Uh, got an enormous amount of work to do. Honestly, I think this is really cool. Um, I think this is, this is really, really cool. He's made some coin doing these conventions for all these years. Um, he's going to be doing his final one in, I guess this is in like, this, this is in like a week. <clears throat> um, yeah, and so now he gets to just focus on his craft. I think that's cool. I think it's cool. Um, so, I don't know. What do you guys think? How do I get the cool images on my TV? It's literally just YouTube. It's just it's just YouTube ambiance. You just, just look up, um, like, fireplace ambiance. <laughs> uh, I hadn't heard the fatal take was used. Yeah, I, I can't imagine... I could not imagine. Uh, it's completely rearranged. They wouldn't use that. Yeah, I wonder, did they, um, um, did they use his stunt double? Because I know his stunt double looked, like, eerily similar to him. So I would have thought that they, like, redid it. Um, 
anyway, um, not gonna wash my hair with beer. That sounds crazy. Uh, I use I use good stuff. I'm good. Um, uh, thoughts on the new Strangers trilogy? We talked about this last time, I think, cause. And I just don't have that much more to say. I also, I reacted to the new trailer um, over on the Patreon and I compared it to the 2008 trailer. And I just don't care. I just don't care. I think it's, um, I think it's boring and tired and I'll just believe it when I see it that they actually have a good plan to make it into three movies. So, um, you're right, Dad? I know. Um, checking season three is going to be awesome. You're looking, you're loving it. The old man design, I really like it too. Just, just when you think that the the idea well has run dry for that franchise, they really hit us with a curveball. So yeah, no, I'm I, I'm into it. Um, I've been into the storyline for season three, super into it. The fact that they're in the White House, I'm very into it. Uh, oh, that was the director that she cheated on him with. What? I feel like there was something not great about that situation after two between her and Rupert. He was married at the time. Stinky, stinky boots. Smelly boots. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Um, all right. Hope that's not a spoiler. No, I mean, like, if you've been keeping up with the new season, that's kind of like the whole premise of the new season. It's like him, you know, Chucky, he, he in the past, like, that's part of his whole thing. He's got to he's got to figure out ways to survive in his various bodies and all these situations. So, um, that's a myth. Okay, good. That'd be good. Um, the chicken nugget is looking rough. Yeah. Oh, I have time to binge the Child's Play movies. Ah, good. As a fan of the show, wow. You've seen the show but not the movies. I guess that makes sense for for. For these for these crazy kids, these new generations. Um that's how I feel. If you can grow an awesome head of hair, it's a sin to cut it. I know. Also, if you can't grow a beard, don't. <laughs> yeah. Scott can't really grow a beard. All his hair is up top. <laughs> um, if they don't bring Glenn Glenda back for the series, I'm not here for it. I kind of agree. I thought that their time was way too short-lived. I agree. Or if the Andy character comes back and they finally recognize him. Uh, in his uh, 30s, early 40s as a heartthrob. Mm. Agree. Agree. Kind of looks like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, he is like 93. Oh, my foot's asleep. <laughs> my foot's got pins and needles. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Okay. Ah. Uh. I've, yeah, I've heard really great things about Clive when I did, oh my god, when I did my research um, for my Hellraiser comparison, sorry, I'm slapping my leg right now, um, when I did my, yeah, research, I saw a bunch of, like, convention footage of him, um, just answering questions, and then, um, also there was, like, a reunion, uh, convention panel with him and, um, a bunch of the actors, you know, like, um, what's his face? Doug Bradley? Is it Doug Bradley? Am I mixing this up? I can't be right. Whoever plays Pit, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and the reunion was just so sweet. Like everybody when they reacted to him, because he made like a surprise appearance, and I don't think anybody knew, and they all hugged him, and he just seems like a great guy. He seems great. Um, yeah, and loves his fans. Oh. So it's a big deal. It's like a big decision to really just be focusing on his craft, you know. Um, and maybe, you know, who's to say that he wouldn't come back to conventions eventually, but also like at a certain point, I feel like you would get too old for that. Just all the travel and staying in hotels and just, the, you know, the, the excitement of meeting all these strangers and maybe he wants to like protect his immune system a little bit. <laughs> oh, final destination. Oh, dad, we need to, I, a final destination deep dive in the cards. Oh yeah, Absolutely. Um, I'm kind of like, I'm waiting on the new one to come out, but we don't have a release date. I don't think, I, th I think we know it's next year though. Right. Um, we had some updates on that, uh, including the potential cast. Where did I, oh, here it is. Um, okay. I don't know why I can't, whatever. I saw this on Twitter, so we can move on to this. Um, I feel like I was on a train of thought and then I kind of lost it. 
but um, such is life, and life goes on. So, let's get this train back on the tracks, and we'll just talk about something else. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, oh, because my dad brought up Final Destination. Um, yes, I want to do a deep dive when the new one comes out. Also, I've been telling these people, Dad, I've been telling these people that you were watching the Final Destination movies, and that we would do a stream, a spoiler stream on the entire franchise. So, let's let's get it together, Dad. Come on. We gotta talk about Final Destination. Um, anyways, so yeah, there's a rumored cast. Uh, I don't know how credible these sources are. They're just, like, people on Twitter. But this guy, like, this person, I don't know what they are. They, um, they, they tend to be right about these things. Uh, so yeah, so this is the rumored cast of the new Final Destination. And Richard Harmon, I gotta look it up because, hold on. If this is the same guy from Fear Street, uh, it's not. Who is this guy? He's from the 100. Why do I know his face? Oh, no, that's I Still See You. What do I know you from? I mean, he's got, you know, he's kind of got one of those faces. He looks like a lot of guys. You know, maybe that's why I feel like I know him. Uh, But yeah, the cast is like pretty unknown to me um let me see here that's oh i save every cat video that i see on twitter and i make scott watch them with me <laughs> um yeah because I'm, I'm in like in my bookmarks but yeah so and then i feel like i know her anna lore but i don't recognize any of their names i don't really recognize their faces but yeah, so this is the rumored cast, which I don't know if that goes along with things that I know about the movie already, um, but there are Final Destination 6 updates. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, we know it's going to be called Bloodlines, which I don't know why that's such a common thing um, for, like, franchises to go to. Anyway, um, okay, just pulled this up. So, let me share it. Year. Okay. Um, okay. So, Craig Perry recently shared. Uh, they announced the completion of the first day of filming. Oh, yes. Right. That was the big update. They have completed filming. Okay. What is, what is, what's going on here? So many ads. Ugh. Okay. Um, the film is set to coincide with the franchise's 25th anniversary in 2025, promising a theatrical release, including IMAX screens. That was the big, that was the big update. Like, holy shit. All these movies, Final Destination 6 being released in IMAX. Are we for real right now? Um, but yeah, there's no actual release date yet. Right, okay. Um, the official cast remains under wraps. Uh, speculation is rife about potential returns from stars of the original films. Uh... Yeah, no, I, Devin Sawa, from what I've seen he, him talk about, I don't think that he's returning. Um, Tony Todd has shown interest in reprising his role, who I remember hearing rumors that, like, it was going to be, Tony Todd was going to be a lot more involved with the new one, but I don't know. Um, Adam B. Stein will direct the film. Craig Perry is returning as producer. John Watts, director of Spider-Man No Way Home, is involved in the production. Guy Busick. We were just talking about him. And Laurie Evans, known for their work on Ready or Not and Scream 5, are penning the script. Okay. How interesting. How interesting. That feels like good news to me. Uh, rumors suggest a shift towards first responders as essential characters. This unique angle could explore the daily choices and challenges faced by EMTs, firefighters, and police officers. Oh. How interesting. Um, no trailer yet. Okay, yeah. That's it from this. Um... I also feel like I saw recently Tiago sent me, it was like a poster and it looked like a tsunami, but I don't think it was a, a an official poster. Um, Final Destination 6 poster. Uh, oh, okay. Well, there's some on IMDb. So let me share these. Uh, uh huh. So this one's on IMDb. Um, that's kind of cool, but it looks, you know, that's, oh, is that, that's a, this is a Spanish poster. Interesting. Okay. Here's this one from Towers Fall Fates Call. Oh, and this has the IMAX on it. Um, so this, I wonder if this is going to be like the official poster here. 
Uh, this one I know is like a fan edit. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Concept teaser poster. Um, don't think this one's official, but I was really hoping for like some kind of boat accident to begin with. Um, what's this? What, what, what is going on here? This is freaking AI. What is this slop? What is that? Um, I don't know if that one's official either, but yeah, people have like made some cool ones in 3D. Uh, yeah, I think this is the only official one though here. What about this one? Death is everywhere. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this one is a legit one, but would go along with the current speculation. I don't know where the one is that Tiago sent me, but there was like a tsunami. There was like a big wave on the front of it. But anyway, so yeah, there's a lot to speculate about, especially because it's also rumored that they're going to be getting away from the uh, the initial concept of like the visions and stuff. From what I understand, because it's called Bloodlines, there was like a woman that survived that shouldn't have, and then she had children. And so death is like going after her lineage, um, to my understanding. So. I think that's cool. Um, I would still like to see a big disaster, though. So I don't want them to entirely get rid of that and, like, the visions and stuff. But uh, the uh, the the first responder thing also sounds really cool to me. Uh, I think they could really easily tie in real-world concepts there, especially because, you know, I mean, some people, when the EMTs get there at the very last second and save their life, Surely death is not too happy about that. So there's a lot that you could do with that, especially if some of it like takes place in a hospital. Ugh, there's a lot of weird, gross ways to die in a hospital. Um, so yeah, I'd be into that. I'd be into all of that. I think, you know what? And it's exciting too, because because there are these different avenues they could take. It also just tells me that the franchise is is not near its completion. Like it's it, it could definitely live on for a while longer, which does make me happy because... Even, you know, Final Destination 4, the Final Destination, I still love that movie. Like, it's so bad, but it's still so fun. You know, even the bad movies are good. Um, <clears throat> Clive Barker's my boy. Yeah. Um, I really desperately need to read some of his books. Um, let's see. They dragged her. Yeah. I, like, wasn't really, um, wasn't really online at that time. I was still, like, a child. But anyway. Um, oh yeah, Poor Things is great. Glad that you watched it. Uh, yeah, Jennifer's Body, the deep dive's coming out on Monday, baby. I shot it yesterday. That's why my hair is done and straight, because I dressed up like Jennifer again. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear it too. Hopefully I can read some of them with my horror book club. Oh, fun. All right, sequels to his iconic franchises, and you have a beer. <laughs> nice. Um, can't wait for the cast for Final Destination. Uh, wait, Trap. Oh, Trap, yeah, um. Wait, Trap, that's M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, right? Or am I mixing it up? No, no, no. That, that's M. Night Shyamalan's. And his daughter's movie... Oh, what's that one called? The... The Outsiders or... What's... Or something like that? I can't remember. Um... Oh, hey! Hey, Mike Adele, Kai. Um... Let's see... New Line Cinema choosing the directors of the live action Kim Possible. I mean, a lot of directors' choices don't make a lot of sense to me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Pause. Pause. Okay. Ho hold on. I just discovered who he was um, because. What did he direct? What did he. What did, what, hold on. Everybody relax. Everybody just wait a minute. Um, wait, why did I think that he... Why did I think that he directed a, a Leprechaun movie? Why did I think that? Because he did it. It's not on his IMDb. <laughs> um, why did I think that? I... Because I was just talking about this with Tiago. And I was like, they got the director of the worst... Hold on! Leprechaun Origins. Because I swear to God. Oh, no, no, no. That's Zach Lepovsky. What's he dra- Wait. Wait a minute. Okay. Hold Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I might be mixing myself up here. But, yeah, okay. So, this guy. And then he's going to be credited for Final Destination 6. It's right here. 
but he did Leprechaun Origins, which is the worst. Wait, no, so is this guy directing it? Then what is Adam B. Stein doing? What did I just... Hold on. He... Okay, Adam B. Stein is... Where is the... Oh. Oh, they're co-directing. They're co-directing. Okay. Um, yeah, weird. Anyways, 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 anyways. Um, yeah, okay. I want to know what you guys think about, like, the plot and all that stuff. Um... Uh, with the turn like Bloodlines, it's gonna be... It's gotta be good. Well... Pet Cemetery Bloodlines was one of the worst movies of last year, so I don't know. I don't know. Going IMAX, oh, the scope of the death is top notch. It should be great. It should be. If they're going IMAX, then they better be doing some huge disaster crash like a cruise ship. If they're doing IMAX, like, come on. Come on. Um, oh, wrong. The third Final Destination is the best one in the franchise, and that's just that's not it. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. <laughs> um, yeah, sign me up. I know, but there's only a, a handful of IMAX theaters, and you better believe I'll, I'll drive the 45 minutes. I'll go out to one. Um, uh, beach premonitions. Yeah, it could be at the beach. I prefer them on the ship, I think. I don't know. Uh, First Responders is not happening anymore. It's the tower collapse. I didn't see that. That wasn't in this article, though. I don't know if that's, like, confirmed, confirmed. Because that one, that was written um, on March 7th, the one that I was just looking at. So that's, like, our newest update. Uh, that's kind of boring to me. That's kind of boring. Uh, I'm in for Final Destination and IMAX, right? Maybe you can come down and we can see it together, Dad. Uh, the lineage of the surviving people of the tower collapse will lead to the people from the other movies. Oh, yeah. Weren't people talking about um, What's-Her-Face Clear, that character returning? I don't know. Oh, bye, Dad. See you soon. Bye. Peace be with you. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I've i seen... There's so, there's so many rumors about it um, and just not enough credible sources reporting on it. So I think we just have to wait. Just have to wait. Um, the Watched. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. I'm excited for that, too. I like the fact that the cast isn't too well known. It gives new talent a chance. And then if it works out well, uh, maybe the next one would would more casting know well. What? What? <laughs> um, ooh! Uh, the OG House of Wax, or the, the first remake from the 50s, or the 2005 one. Um, both good. Both good. Um, thank you. The only way I can see a Bloodline story working with a legacy character and making sense is with Isabel from part two. Oh, yeah, she had a baby after surviving the highway incident. Right. I haven't heard anything about them bringing her back, though. Not a thing. So, anyway. Uh, oh, now we're talking about Final Destination. No worries. Or, er, I'm a few minutes behind on the chat, but yeah. Um... Agreed. Yeah, third is the best. I'm saying. Um, it's the only one that has good actors in it. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Devin Sawa is a great actor now, but the first movie... Every movie except the third one does not have real actors in it. Like, they can't... Mary Elizabeth Winstead is the only true actress in that franchise. She elevates it, you know, um, more than it has any right to. Uh... And on this note, she could come back. <laughs> she could come back. Uh, my favorites kind of bounce between the second and third, but quality-wise, the third one is absolutely the best. Just all around filmmaking, acting, everything. Um, uh, the meme landscape for Final Destination 5 came out before the memification of everything became a thing. The meme landscape. Um, I don't know. Probably just like joking about how stupidly people die. That, you know, um, <clears throat> like, I feel like there would be a lot of people that would that'll be like, this would happen to me, lol. I don't know. 
Honestly, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good. Um, oh yeah. That was a price final destination shows that as a title. It's such a, it's an odd choice. Like I get, I get trying to stay away from the numbers because for new audiences, the six would probably turn them off. So I get it as like a marketing strategy, but, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of franchises with bloodlines in the title, they're never good. Like, it's weird. It's really weird. Um, yeah, I, yeah, Final Destination 5, and, I mean, they're all, I, I like things about all of them. Um, I like things about all of them. I really dislike the CGI in Part 5, though. It really, it's annoying. Um, oh, wait, yeah, she was never a victim. Duh. Duh. Right. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. She never was supposed to die. Mm. Because it's true. You're correct. <laughs> um, oh my god. the bro I've talked about this on my channel so much. I've talked about it to death. But yeah, there's way too much chemistry between the brother and sister, the twin, the twins in the remake. Just watch out for that. It's really funny. Um, but it's it's crazy. Um, thank you. I've been hearing the clear returning rumors too, but how? And like the dude on your shirt, she doesn't have dream demons to bring her back. Um, yeah, I feel like I don't know if they did, it would totally be like the Dr. Loomisification of clear. She'd come back with like all the burns and stuff, you know? Um, um, stop, you're stop being annoying. You're incorrect you're quite literally incorrect do you make movies because i do anyway um i find it so interesting it's so sad people that take selfies in places oh hi because that's a whole culture um if final destination ever made commentary on like just stupid influencers that would absolutely be part of it people like scale buildings and it's some i don't know it's some like adrenaline junkie culture thing um Anyway, uh, I think the guy who directed the last three Spider-Man movies wrote the new Final Destination movie. Um, that directed the last three Spider-Man movies. No, they mentioned um, one of the directors. Uh, no, no, no. The director of, I think, No Way Home it was. Oh, shit, I closed. I have all my tabs open. I think I closed that one. Um, but I think they mentioned that he's going to be like a producer. The director of uh, of No Way Home, he's attached to it. So anyway, <clears throat> um, but yeah, okay, let's, let's move on there. What else did I, I seriously, like, I did not have time to prep for this stream at all. So we're just going to get what we get here. But, um, oh, I was excited about Violent Night 2. That's what I was excited about. Um, cause I love the first Violent Night. I finally, I showed it to my dad, not finally, cause it came out in 2022, but I showed it to my dad last year and we gave it a spoiler filled review over on the Patreon. We both really like it. I love it. Violent Night. Um, and I don't know what nobody is. I, I forget. I think it's, um, the first one is with the actor, I think from Better Call Saul, right? Saul, what's his face? I don't know. But yeah, um, sequels are in the works, baby. Um, so is this the same? So the same team did both of those movies. I didn't know that both Bob Odenkirk and David Harbour, the stars of the original films are keen on returning. <laughs> the scripts are currently being written with several drafts completed. Some work still remains. Okay. So they're not shooting yet, but they're like well underway in terms of development. So, um, oh, the fall guy, wait, hold on. The pair were revealing their new movie, The Fall Guy. Um, they did The Fall Guy too. Isn't The Fall Guy? Isn't that um the new movie about stunt people with uh with um Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling? Right? Is that the one? Or am I mixing that up? Um, planning on return on uh, returns to those universes. Hopefully, honestly, even potentially the end of this year for Nobody Two, beginning of next year for Violent Night Two, if we can find time in everyone's schedules. But the development's going super well, and everybody's really, really excited. I Okay, so, yeah, the only thing, I feel like Violent Night 2, we're probably a ways off from that, just because, um, <laughs> do you guys hear that, I think it was Millie Bobby Brown, she was interviewed, and she, she said that there's still, like, nine months left 
of shooting Stranger Things season five. <laughs> oh my god. How embarrassing. I can't even... <laughs> Not that I'll be seated for it, but I'm just imagining that the, the final season of Stranger Things is going to be a mess. I think it's going to be a mess. Um, love the 2005 House of Wax after I checked it out on your DVD. Oh, yeah, I sent that one to you. Um, love the soundtrack, especially. It's honestly more of a remake of Tourist Trap. That's what everybody says. Yeah, I have seen it. Um, uh, thank you. I'm honestly being the best entry. I didn't, that's not what I said. I drank part four higher by less than a hair. Best entry is the original. Um, I don't know. I, my, my ranking is, has, it's switched around a lot for Final Destination. I used to have the fifth one at my number two, and now I think I rank it at number four. And then I had, at one point, I'm sure the original was like my number one or two, and then I was like, no, it's number three. For a while, my favorite was number two. It depends what I'm in the mood for. Like, it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, anyway, I'm stoked to hear about a Violent Night sequel. Yeah, I love seeing the first one in theaters. Me too, because it totally was just unassuming. Like, I feel like they didn't market it that much beforehand. And then all of a sudden, there it was. And it became, it, it was in my, like, my top 10 or top 15 movies of 2022. Which is saying something, because I saw, like, 80 new horror movies that year. Um, it just, there were so many good ones. Um, let's see. Um, okay. I, you're being rude. You're getting blocked. You're so, you're annoying me. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Um, it's just, it's just a rude thing to assume. Um, uh, they took a long time to shoot season four of Stranger Things. Season four is the best season in my opinion. Uh, it's better because I like I don't think I literally ever re-watched the show I just watched it as it came out so it's quite literally been almost a decade since I watched the original season I think I remember the original season being the best though because after that it went full-on like kitschy 80s nostalgia so I don't know I feel like I remember the original se season being the best one I mean, I had a lot of fun with, like, season three and, you know, the mall vibes and all of that, of course, and our new character, but I don't know. I just can't. I can't. Um, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's probably not going to come out this year. I'm assuming it's coming out next year. So, anyway. Uh, I'm just, I'm just not going to be seated. I can't. I can't. I, I can't. Two, three, one. Wait, in which? Oh, I'm assuming two is at the top because four is probably last for most people. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, Paris Hilton. We're talking about um, you being. Um, I know Paris Hilton. Well, we've talked about that. We've talked about that, but I love her in that movie. To be honest, um, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm just gonna double check on Bloody Disgusting. I don't really think that I had any more topics. I'm sorry. I just was like not prepared today. Um, but oh. Well, I put this in the thumbnail, so I should probably get to this. We'll learn a little bit more about it because we're getting there's going to be a remake of um, a Roger Corman classic. I've heard really good things about Psycho Gorman, but I've never seen it. So I think this is cool. And also this picture, I was like, yo, I was like, what's up? Um, oh, and then maybe we should talk about maybe we should talk about that. Anyway, OK. So, 1983 sword and sorcery film Deathstalker, produced by Roger Corman, who, if anybody doesn't know, he was, like, the king of B-movies back in the day. Made a lot of, like, really wacky sci-fi stuff. Um, and it was I was so shocked to learn that Carnosaur was not a Roger Corman film because it just was so that vibe. If you've seen that, if you came to the watch along with us for that. Um, so, yeah. So, Deathstalker will return with a brand new remake movie. Read on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, director Stephen uh, Kostansky, The Void. I haven't seen that either. PG Psycho Gorman. I never saw that, but everyone loved it. I think it's on Shudder. Pretty sure that's where it released. Um, it's bringing it back to life with Daniel Bernhardt attached to star as the titular Death Stalker. He's from John Wick, Nobody, and Barry. Daniel Bernhardt. Wait, let me. I need to look. I don't know his face. I need, to, I need a face because I love John Wick. Um... He's oh this guy. I know, wait no he looks like he looks like a combination of like 
John Hamm and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? He literally looks, he looks like a love child of John Hamm and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Wow. Crazy. Um, anyways, so, <laughs> anyways, uh, so okay, the original films were produced by Roger Corman to capitalize on the popularity of Conan the Barbarian, which I'm not familiar with. Uh, Kostansky's new vision promises a greater emphasis on exploring the series' fantasy setting and filling with monsters that will be largely realized through the director's signature combination of creature suits, prosthetic effects, effects makeup, and stop-motion animation. Ooh! Ooh, I love it. I love that. I'm thrilled to be working with Steven. I love this genre and what Steven has been making in his creature shop is mind-blowing. I'm so excited to do battle as a Deathstalker who is more of a grilled war veteran in this story. Okay, cool. So I don't really know anything about this, but that just excites me um, just because I've heard good things about Psycho Gorman and this looks sick. And if you're a fan of practical effects and stop motion and all that good stuff like I am, then I think it's cool. I'm going to be looking out for that one. Um, and then was there one more thing? Oh, I was going to look at the... Uh, well, no, we don't need to talk about imaginary. It's just... They projected that it was going to make $30 million and it only made $10 million. And I was like, yeah, what did you... I, was, I almost said, what did you think was going to happen? But they thought that it was going to make more money. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Anyway. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, just watched Deathstalker last night on Shudder. Oh, it's on Shudder? Oh. Did a whole tribute to Roger Corman. They had him, his wife, and Bruce Dern on the show. Oh. I forget that Roger Corman is alive. Isn't he like 90? Hold on. Roger Corman. He's 97. He's 97, bro. That's crazy. I always think that he's not alive. Um, but anyway, haven't watched Psycho Gorman. Isn't that film gory? Uh, I would imagine so. I think so. But I don't know. Oh, hey. Um... He was in Silence of the Lambs, as was George Romero. Oh, I didn't even know that. It's been a while since I've given that movie a rewatch. I'm honestly super due. Um, he made it in Argentina because he found out it was cheaper to make movies in other countries. He made some in many different ones. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, even now, like a lot of modern movies, I mean, uh, Barbarian was shot in, um, in, what was it, Hungary? No. Romania? No. One of those, one of those up there. It was, it was shot across the pond. Speaking of evil remake. Oh, it's finished shooting. Cause James McAvoy did a live on set. Oh, I didn't know that. I have hope this will be a Blumhouse good movie. I hate to bring your hopes down. I just don't think so. We already know it's not going to be as good as the original. It's not going to have as much bite. Um, I'm excited for a James McAvoy villain performance as much as the next guy but like i don't know what else that movie's gonna give us really um oh this would be fun i would love if paris hilton came back to horror honestly i would uh, have i seen love lies bleeding no no but i i think that uh i'm gonna go see it tomorrow i think tomorrow's the day um because yeah i told scott that we need to see it so um he was like i i i sent i sent him a text and i was like um i was like lesbian bodybuilding romance this weekend queen and scott said like i'm i don't really like romance movies and i was like well it's not really about you all the time is it sometimes we have to watch things that i want to watch <laughs> um and then also i was like did you even read the synopsis it's like i'm pretty sure it's it's some type of thriller there's also bodybuilding i'm like there's a lot that would that would appeal to you Ugh. Anyway, um, so we're going to go see it. Uh, I do know that I don't think Gore Splatter looks that impressive. Well, but I think that it's mostly done practically. I think that's why everybody... Um... Oh, oh, this can be... A, yeah, this can be our last topic because I did forget to talk about that. Thank you for the reminder. Hold on, let me pull that up really quick. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Um, okay, wait, so I think, I think the latest update was, this is March 2nd. Okay, there's not, uh, 
There's not as much info as I would like here, but we'll see. Okay, um, let me finish up talking about this. And may he live forever. Uh, or until he doesn't want to live anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I haven't seen this. Apologies. Uh... Yeah, some people, I got a comment on that video that people, like, hadn't even heard of that movie yet. And I was like, really? I've seen so many trailers for it. Blumhouse, they are a slut for pushing trailers. They really are. Um, And Norman Lear, I'm unfamiliar. But, uh, let's, oh, he died this year. Rest in peace, whoever you are. Um, That tags you, yeah. <laughs> I always do that. That's how I, like, ask him if he wants to do anything. Movie? Horror movie tonight, Queen? That's always what I say. Um, yes, I'm I'm aware. I sort of did, like, a deep dive of it uh, when it came out. Seeing Dune 2 tomorrow. I still have no interest in that. I still have no interest in Dune. Scott and I decided that we think that we do want to try to get into it and, like, actually watch them. But, like, I don't think it's going to happen. Because we just we don't have time. We don't have time. Um, anyway, I, what was I gonna, oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about Mia Goth, the Mia Goth situation. So, um, just for, like, a little, a little catch-up, or I think, I think they do a little catch-up in the article, because it, this news broke back in, like, January, I think. So, uh, ads, no, leave me alone. Why can't I block the notifications? Okay, anyways, um, yeah, a $500,000 battery lawsuit, because, Allegedly, she kicked somebody on the head um, during a take. Uh, the She denied the allegations. She intentionally kicked a film extra on set and then belittled him in the bathroom. According to court documents, uh, she asked L.A. Superior Court judge to dis dismiss the claims brought by a man named James Hunter. Oh, well, now we know his name. Um, so in the lawsuit, he claims he worked as a background extra. Yes, yes, and he was on the ground and she kicked him in the head. Um, he was playing dead for hours while wearing a robe and covered in fake blood from head to toe. I don't feel sorry for you. That's just how movies are made. Like, what? The conditions were rough. He had to endure ants and mosquitoes. I, look, Bruce Campbell has, like, this giant scar on his calf from where he got an infection from, like, a, a huge splinter or something. Or, like, getting stabbed by a stick out in the woods when they were making Evil Dead. He, like, he basically had, like war veteran trauma where he had to sleep on his wood floor once he got back home after shooting that movie because he was used to sleeping on the wood floor of the, the drafty ass cabin like i'm sorry that's just making movies i'm sorry anyways um per the lawsuit she was instructed to run past the extra step over him and stare and then continue to run she was not being careful kept nearly stepping on him during the takes bro like you knew the role you were signing up for correct like, maybe you're not a stunt person, and maybe they should have hired a stunt person because clearly you're very green to this. But anyway. So, um, Goss was worn by the staff, then intentionally kicked him. Kick caused him serious pain and stiffness. Yeah, he got a concussion, which I'm sorry to him about that. Like, that sucks. Um, but then apparently she came and taunted, mocked, and belittled him. It just doesn't make any sense. A hunter claimed the fake blood the crew put on him stuck to his body and caused pain when taking off. Dude! <laughs> I don't want to say, like, so, but, like, what does that have to do with this? Anyway, uh, in her newly filed response, she argued if any of the allegations in the complaint occurred, which defendant denies, then each and every cause of action allegedly against defendant therein is barred because plaintiff consented to and approved all the acts and or omissions about which plaintiff now complains. That's what I'm saying. Like, you sign on to, like, you know, a decent, but I mean, it's probably, like, kind of mid-budget um, since it's A24, I'm only assuming, but... I'm sure they, I'm sure they cut Ty West a fat check to make this movie, right? So it's a pretty, you're on a high caliber set. You surely signed, a, at minimum, an NDA. I'm sure that you signed um, a, a liability waiver. Like, of course you did. So that, that includes all of that. That includes accidents that happen on set. Um, and I just, like, okay. Furthermore, Goth says any damages allegedly suffered by Hunter um, were not approximately caused by any acts or omissions of her. Asset that all claims be dismissed and her attorney fees be covered. Director and A24 both denied all allegations of wrongdoing in their recently filed responses. A judge, ha a judge has yet to rule. 
Um, I just think this is my opinion, and we talked about this before. Um, but before we didn't know like what her response was gonna be and like her official filings and stuff. So I'm just kind of I'm just kind of repeating myself, but like it like uh, uh, other day players on the set that have no stake in the game, I just feel like they would have come out by now. Um and and bared witness to this. Uh unless like they're not allowed to pending a trial or something. I don't know how a legal system works. Um, but people like to open their big mouths. So I just feel, I just feel like we would have had another witness by now. And it doesn't line up with like, you know, with the character of Mia Goth, I feel like I've done a lot of deep dives into a lot of shit and people that work with her, they, they seem to delight in it. And it's just, it's just hard to imagine, but like, you know, we don't, we don't know these people. We don't know what happened. So it's like, I don't know. It just smells fishy to me because suing her for half a million dollars It's smelly boots, stinky boots. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, Scott's not the main character in his own life. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> um, Bulgaria. That was the one. That's the one. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, the director did Eden Lake. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Um, Black Phone 2, I think we talked about this last time with the sledges. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to talk about that today. It's, I just, I just don't really have high hopes for it. <clears throat> um, yeah, Eden Lake, I can't, I don't think I can rewatch that movie. It was too tough. It was, it was too tough. Uh, the David Lynch Dune, I haven't really, <laughs> I haven't really heard good things about that one, but I feel like I might find it preferable, honestly, because... Denis Villeneuve, I mean, incredible director. I love Arrival, but I don't know. It's just, it just seems too serious. It seems too serious to me. Um, and, I, and uh, oh, and there's a documentary. I was going to have Dolly, Orson Welles, McJack. Damn. All right. Uh, a Mother's Instinct is a new Anne Hathaway film. Is that the one? No, that's not like the Harry Styles fanfic one, right? I don't know. Um, oh, he's making a new Little Shop of Horrors? He's still working? He's 97. He should be in the club. <laughs> um, even with the extra complaining about the conditions, he at least wanted to return to the job, but part of the suit was that they fired him after the onset situation. He wanted to do the job, but no. Which is also, like, why would he want to come back? If the, if the, if he was really belittled like that, by the lead actress and sounds like nobody else was sticking up for him and this really happened like why would he want to come back it doesn't make any sense to me it doesn't make sense they could have kept him but she was too afraid of any backlash she might face with him on set after it happened so they just made it easy for themselves and fired him i guess uh, i guess it would make sense that he wanted to come back if if it wasn't as intense as he made it seem and then that would make sense. And so then maybe they just kind of shot themselves in the foot by firing him. But I feel like, I just feel like there has to be more to the story about, like, I don't know. I'm sure that there was like an exchange of words and maybe Mia Goth got really heated. But then it's like, I just don't see her starting that. Like, you know? I don't know. It just smells fishy. It just all smells fishy to me. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if she did that. She doesn't seem nice in real life. Have you, like, watched interviews and stuff? I mean, not just- I- listen, I literally just said in my last video that, like, I think that you have to be kind of, like, pretty weird and a little psycho to play crazy characters. So, would I be immensely surprised? No. Um... I just heard a lot about her character from the people she works with. And, you know, she is a beloved. So the bathroom thing, it, ju it just doesn't make sense. People, yeah, people have pointed out that she's married to Shia LaBeouf, who, like, historically um, was apparently, like, a very abusive partner. To, was Who was he? FK Twigs? Was that who he was with? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know her life. I don't know her. It's all opinion and speculation. There's too many. There's too many what ifs. Um. So we. I don't know. Probably shouldn't keep talking about it. But. Uh. So. Uh, I did not. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good pull quote. I did not have Twink turning into a leprechaun on my bingo card. <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't. Um, thank you. I love sci my almost as much as horror. Uh, I thought the David Lynch Dune was only okay. I've had no interest in the recent movies. Me either. Because <laughs> I just feel like they're probably kind of similar. Um, just in terms of scale. Not necessarily concept, but kind of. In concept and scale to The Lord of the Rings, which just wasn't really for me. Um... I don't, that type of fantasy is just, like, not really interesting to me. Um, so, she's gotta be a little unhinged. I think so, 100%. Uh, maybe she was really in character and got a little too lost in character. Maybe it, maybe, maybe that's what happened. Um, but hell if I know. Hell if I know. Uh, oh, you guys are, like, talking to yourselves in the, in the chat. I think that that was the last thing um oh this is cool wait i just learned about this right this very moment wait you guys this is cool a horror movie called the fetus starring bill mosley and lauren lavera our terrifier queen and bill mosley okay all right when when aliesa becomes pregnant it brings up chris's uh, deep-rooted trauma surrounding fatherhood upon discovering that their fetus craves human blood they visit their father maddox for answers oh how strange <laughs> how strange okay i don't want to i mean i'm not gonna watch um the fetus <laughs> what the fuck what is this what's the, what's going on here what's ha what's 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 um what's happening here i don't want to watch the trailer because i don't want spoilers i will be seated so um, Joe Lamb. Why do I know that name? I wanted to delve into the emotional terrain of Aliesa's unwanted pregnancy, exploring the complexities it imposes on her relationships with her father and her partner, Chris. Fetus becomes a metaphorical antagonist, unraveling both Chris and Aliesa's psyche, uh, leading them on a haunting journey of fear, self-discovery, and the intricate web of family dynamics. Challenges the boundaries of the horror genre. I mean, I'm always up for pregnancy horror. It sounds kind of like... It has a bit of a Rosemary's Baby um, inspiration to it, but I don't know. That sounds cool. Let me go fishing on Bloody Disgusting. Maybe there's something else. Uh, there's going to be a new movie called Breathe starring uh, Mila Djokovic. She's going to be in a, an apocalypse movie, apparently. Cool. Uh, Joe Dante is directing a horror movie written by Gremlins 2 writer, a Little Shop of Halloween horrors. Okay, cool. Um, what else? One house already. I guess I'll share my screen so you know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, I, yeah, no, I'm, da I'm down too. I'll definitely be seated for sure. Um, go horror animal king in the dark. I didn't really think that there was that much else going on. Um, actually, the Rage Carry Two is pretty good. I still haven't seen that one. Uh, the, oh, this. I guess this was the last thing because I did not look into this yet. I just released my ranking of this franchise. Leprechaun reboot director Felipe Vargas teases his vision for the franchise's reinvention. So it's about to get a ninth installment. Hiring Felipe Vargas. Milk teeth. I don't know what that is. Um, what can we expect? I'm so honored to be on that project. It's such a cool franchise. To me, it makes this, this reality is limitless. Doesn't need to be grounded. Yep. Um, we're still figuring out that tone, balance between horror and comedy. I would love for it to be scary as hell and also hilarious. We're going back to a lot of the roots of roots of Leprechaun in a lot of different ways, which I'm excited about. I think uh you also want to bring in a new audience, so it's a tricky one to figure out. Okay, so he doesn't know what's going on. Going for an elevated. <laughs> Okay. Um, does that mean we're going back to the more serious tone of Leprechaun Origins? Because that sucked. Uh, okay. All right. 
Does that mean we're getting another new Leprechaun rather than the original Warwick Davis incarnation? Film hasn't reached the casting stage. The team is still figuring out the script. Um, and somebody commented, because I didn't know why Warwick Davis had left the franchise after the sixth movie. And somebody told me it was because he had kids, so he didn't want to do horror anymore. So I don't think he'd be coming back, right? Uh, he teases will be as practical as possible. It's part of my initial pitch. I think the practical effects are key. Sure, sure. Oh, Roy Lee is producing. Um, I t Oh, no, no, no. I don't think I have talked about him recently. I I, I did. I've shot a, a lot of videos in, in advance for when I'm uh, going to be out of country. So I have already talked about it, but the video is not coming out for another like month, I think. <laughs> um, but Roy Lee, man, that, that guy is everywhere. He produces everything. Um, produced Barbarian, the It movies, um, just lots of stuff. So he's producing. And then Mike Van Ways. I'm not familiar. Yeah, okay. Ryan Mirror, too much trust in producers. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Well, there you have it. We're getting a ninth Leprechaun movie, everybody. <laughs> Are we so excited? Um, I wish that that news had come out before my video went up, because then I could have talked about it then but whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, and I, I haven't read the book either. So fetuses are scary. I'm always up for some pregnancy horror because it is quite horrifying. Uh, totally different vibe. I'd recommend. I just mean, because I know that they're, they're like very different. Um, I just mean, like the, the, I don't know how to explain it. Um, the the scale of the world and how much you need to know about the different characters and how many moving pieces there are, it's similar in that way, I feel. And I just don't like that. I just don't like that. Um, I am sad, <laughs> yes. Um, did, 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 Charlie Haas, okay. Not really familiar. Uh oh, I like the original Little Shop of Horrors, with uh, with ja wait, Jack Nicholson was in the original. I forgot about that. That the Broadway musical was based on, and the remake was. Oh, then I've seen the remake. I think with Bill Murray. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Re really? I don't know if I've really heard many good things. It's just okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the poster looks for the Bill Mosley movie is so 90s. I love it. Reminds me of the cover of the Bruce Willis video game Apocalypse. Um, yeah, it looks kind of uh, like low budget. <laughs> I don't know. Hope Warwick's kids are grown and into horror now. Me too. Me too. Well, yeah, because wait, when was um Back to the Hood? When was that? That was 2003. Oh, yeah. So this kid's got to be gotta be like my age then, right? Um, no, I haven't heard any news on that one yet. I have not. Uh, last I heard, the news was really exciting. It was rumored that, uh, like, Freddie Prince Jr., I think, was gonna return, and the director of Do Revenge was gonna be directing it. That had me super excited, but I haven't heard anything since. And now I'm like, was that true? Was that real? I don't know. Uh, I really liked the the final movie of the Leprechaun franchise. Watch my ranking, you'll see. Um, yeah, Children of the Corn, I don't know. Maybe it's because they think, oh, maybe finally a good one. Maybe they'll finally make a good one. Um, and so they just, they, so then they try it like 12 times and then just none of them are good. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Warwick Davis did stop making horror movies when he had kids, uh, but he'd always said he'd be open to return when his kids are grown. His youngest turned 18 just before Leprechaun Returns came out. So he could come back. He could come back. But I, I liked the actor that was in Leprechaun Returns. I thought he was good. So I wouldn't be mad if he was recast. That'd be fine with me. So, yeah. Um, Really? The 2009 remake? That's surprising. Uh, someone born in 2003, we turned 21 this year. Yeah, that's a lot for me to digest. I turned 25 this year. How weird. How strange. How bizarre. 
uh, what do you guys think that I should do for my midlife crisis? I mean, not midlife, <laughs> my quarter life crisis. <laughs> what should I do? In which direction shall I go off the rails? Um, should I get like a big chess piece tattoo? Um, well, I'm sp like spending all my savings making a movie right now. Maybe that's my crisis. Uh, Anyway, um, anyone born? Yeah, I know it's, it, it stresses me out a little bit. Hey, Juan. Hi. Um, uh, Children of the Corn 666. That's goofy. I, someday I braved the Leprechaun franchise, which actually was not that bad. Like it was still kind of fun. The movies are really bad, but they're really fun. Um, I feel like Children of the Corn is not going to be that way. I feel like it's going to be a lot more difficult than the Leprechaun franchise. Uh, but someday I'll do it. Someday I'll do it for ya. I'll rank them. Um, you did axe throwing? Wait, wait, wait. You did axe throwing when you turned 30? That's fun. I still haven't done that. I still have not done that. Um, 28, two away from 30. It's funny, we... <laughs> dying at 50? I hope not. I hope, I hope not. Uh, I'm sure your quarter-life crisis will align with the post-production of Light Dia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, no, I feel too young to be here. No, no, you're fine. I turned 27 this year. I remember talking with other kids, thinking that we'd own houses, be married. Oh my god, yeah. Because it's kind of what we were promised. Like, our kids were, I mean, our kid, our parents were having kids, like, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s. Um, and that's just completely unattainable now. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we were promised. So I don't blame us for thinking we would have that by now. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm probably never going to get to own a house. Cool. Cool. In this economy? Hey, from Sweden. Hi. I turned 28 this year. Still in disbelief. <laughs> Lost my chances of being in the 27 Club. That is a good thing, my friend. It was a good thing. Um... I, when I do a deep dive on poor things, I feel like the time has kind of passed for me to do something like that. Although now that it's won a bunch of awards, I don't know if that's why now there's all of a sudden all this discourse because like more people are seeing it. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like the time has passed to do that. But yeah, a lot of people do misunderstand it. Um, I'll conclude here with just my, my thoughts on that discourse because I've seen so much of it to the point where like Articles have been written about how people are upset with the kitty P-O-R-N uh, angle that poor things takes. And I'm like, do we need to have the characters in a movie break the fourth wall to tell you that they don't agree with their characters' actions? Is that what it's going to take? At the, at the level of media literacy that common audiences are at these days? Like, is that seriously what it's going to take? Because people are like, I'm sorry, but you can't, you can't have, like, you know, kid brain and woman body having sex with these men, taking advantage of her, and she's enjoying it. And it's like, it's, that's, that, that, like, that's the, po the point of the movie. It's the whole point of the movie. And... It, it her innocence being lost in a way that she doesn't even know it yet the way that she's discovering it it's the point of the movie i can't i don't have time <laughs> i don't have time i tweeted about it recently even and i was like um what did i say i don't know um i said uh I said, if you think what happens to Bella Baxter is icky, then I have some bad news for you about what happens to girls in the real world. Because it's like, I don't know, people are acting all grossed out about it and like, how dare they make it this way and whatever. And men wrote it and stuff. Um, but it's like, yeah, you should be grossed out. You should. It's the, it's the point of the movie. It's the point. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, that's that's my take on it. My age didn't hit me until I was 48 and realized I, I mean, I'm a year and a half. In a year and a half, I'd be 50. Now I'm less than a year away from 60. Can't kid myself that I'm young anymore. I don't know. I feel because like people are living longer. They're maintaining their health into much older ages. Like my parents are in their mid 60s. My mom just turned 66. And I don't view my parents as old people. 
feel like most people do. They everyone feels like their parents are old. I don't feel like my parents are old people. Um, they take really good care of themselves. They're pretty hip with the times. Like they don't act like old people. You know, they exercise. They're living life. They're still working. Um, you know, I don't. I don't consider sixty old. I feel like sixty is the new forty. When I was a kid, I felt like forty was really old. <laughs> um, but yeah, forty is the new twenty, baby. Um, yeah, it's gonna take time, which, you know, something I'm still trying to give myself grace about. Yeah, I want to check out the book as well. Um, lampshading or calling out the plot holes without doing anything about them is super lame. People need to understand media literacy. They really don't, though. And that's the thing is, like, you can try to explain it to them and they're still not gonna understand. I've seen so many back and forths on letter on letterbox of people like really kindly and really earnestly trying to explain the themes of the movie and that that's the whole point and people still they don't get it <laughs> like they don't get it um i'm not familiar with this uh yeah it's weird and that's the point that's <laughs> like <laughs> okay anyways when I saw Taxi Driver and Clockwork Orange in high school, I realized that main characters aren't role models. Yeah, the most interesting ones are flawed characters. I completely agree. Um, reminds me, I just watched Looper for the first time last night. Um, same thing. Same thing. People say Breaking Bad uh, is good, but can't suspend their disbelief for poor things. Right? Right. Um, uh i'm 24 i don't know why everyone here is talking about their age or past lives i don't know what to say maybe i can live until the year 3000 maybe we all can maybe we can cryogenically freeze our heads and live on forever yeah life is good my step-grandfather is i believe 88 years old or 89 he still frequents the gym he's doing great um yeah shout out technology woo um i'm turning 35 at least people yeah I oh, know. I'm telling you, people are not aging as quickly. <clears throat> yeah, Fight Club too. It's so funny. It's so funny how those get misread too, and like you know, part of his research for the movie with Christian Bale going to Wall Street and meeting the guys that are like, oh yeah, we lo we love American Psycho, and he's like, ironically, right? Ironically, right? And it, no. <laughs> So, you know, media literacy has been poor for a long time. Anyway, um, <laughs> did it, Grandpappy? I know. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for today. I do, I do have some plans today. Um, going to be heading down to LA. So I got to clock out everybody, but thank you for a good stream. Fun talking with you guys today, even about the not so fun topics. Thank you guys for, for showing out. We had like 150 people here. It was a busy day. <laughs> Busy day for the cult of haunted hippie. So good to have you guys here. Um, we'll hopefully I'll we'll try to have a watch along this upcoming week, but next weekend production gets rolling again for liked. So I've been quite spacey and a little neglectful of like answering texts and being active and just being on my shit. Um, just because I'm trying not to half-ass anything. I'm trying to whole ass production right now. Um, anyway, you get it. You get it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can have a watch along this week. Maybe we can watch Slumber Party Massacre 2 together. That'd be fun. Um, maybe on like Monday or Tuesday, but we'll see. I hope that you guys have a great weekend. Be safe tomorrow. Drink lots of water if you're going to be drinking. Um, have a plan for your ride home. Please, everybody be safe. Or just stay in and binge the Leprechaun franchise. You know, that's a good option. So, have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!